yo. Pit crew. This week on Pit Beyond the Script. Kenny Pickett scores. Nobody wants to fail. Nobody wants to lose. Our kids have worked their tails off. Yeah, it was big. You know, it was a nice win. I thought that was the most impressive part of the of the win was, you know, just turning the tide in that game. I love a challenge. I'm going to take a challenge all the time. I'm not scared. I don't care how much bigger than me you are. I'm, I'm ready. You know, spent time, sacrifice their time, their efforts for our freedom. All this and more on this edition of Pit Beyond the Script. It starts as a game, a gathering of friends. And slowly, as some begin to sit back, others stand out. The joy of playing turns to passion. And as the skills develop, so do the minds. And they begin to seek challenges, peers, and mentors to further their abilities and opportunities. The love and passion becomes a thirst for people in a place we're going to show everybody else in the country who we are that will embrace and push a hunger for excellence Flinch, the ACC. and to be in and among champions these are the dreamers scholars leaders oh, these are the guides teachers mentors and this is the opportunity the challenge the place <laughs> this is pit Beyond the Script. So, Rossi, it wasn't that long ago that Florida State won a national title. Is that a big game for teams? Uh, I would say it's a big game only because it's the next one, not because of who we're playing. That's just the philosophy of us as a team and me as a player, really. It's just the next game, so obviously it's a big one. I feel like this week we've been going at it full speed, you know, and just communicating with each other, you know, watching extra film with each other, and yeah, just want to win. We, we kind of deal with our losses positively because uh, adversity is what makes you strong, so we invite it just so we could get better. The weather in Tallahassee, mostly cloudy with a chance of a few showers and a four o'clock kickoff temperature of near 80 degrees. I think Panther fans are anxious to see now that Kenny Pickett looks like he's going to start. This team will rise to the occasion. So I expect to see the best that Pitt has to offer and uh, anxious to get this game underway. Field. Ball's caught, breaking away. Jared Wayne into Florida State territory. The hold by Chris Tadulu, the snap by Adam Midas, and the Panthers on the field goal by Mr. Alex Kessman. Draw first blood. Throws that pass, and it's intercepted at the 31-yard line. A good leaping job by A.J. Woods with his first career interception. Patty in the game, the quarterback empty set. Patty, a good runner. He's going to run the quarterback draw. He's into the end zone for the Panthers touchdown. Oh! Great job by this pit defense. They seem to have settled in, Billy. They've got a better feel for what Florida State's doing. And First and ten. And Vincent Davis breaks free. Inside the ten toward the pylon. So the Panthers. Panthers in the red zone go Nick Patty one more time and take the lead. Fourth and two, they're going to go for it. They hand it off, and guess what? We're going the other way. The ball taken over by the Panthers defense on downs. Pickett rolls right, throws it under pressure. The pass is caught, taking it off the ground with that great reception as freshman Jordan Addison. Here's Pickett. He will run, and Kenny Pickett scores. Touchdown! Three rushing scores by Pittsburgh quarterbacks here in the first half. Continue to stick together, fight with each other. One, two, three. Got to like their position, and they're going to get a chance to start on defense. Here's the blitz. He throws the pass. It's intercepted at the 24-yard line. DeMar Hamlin stepping in the route. 
Pickett hands it off, running left. Vincent Davis cuts for the goal line, and that's a Panther touchdown. They're playing really good football up front right now, dominating the line of scrimmage. And the Panthers are having fun in Florida. You see the burst Jordan Addison after he caught that football? Purdy, delayed blitz, throws it down the field, intercepted, running with the football, Brandon Hill, and he not only gets the ball, he takes it to the chuck for the pick six touchdown for the Panthers. Big win for Pitt, 41-17 over the Knowles. Uh, I told y'all when we come back, the lights gonna be on. Well, I said it and I meant it. together as a team guys we got to play together okay there'll be ups and downs like every game we've ever been in we play together keep going out let's get it cranked up let's go Hello and welcome to Pitt Beyond the Script alongside head coach Pat Narduzzi I'm Casey Garrow Pitt Studios coach in the final home stretch you get a win at Florida State not easy to do you break that losing streak how important was this win it was big you know our kids needed that one really 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 bad and we had a team meeting last night and you know our kids were energetic you know back where you want to see them I mean nobody wants to fail nobody wants to lose our kids have worked their tails off and, and sometimes you don't get credit for working um, but they certainly got the credits Saturday night pick it downfield Ball's caught, breaking away. Jared Wayne into Florida State territory. Pickett fires, pass, complete inside the 10. Pickett now wants to run. He's at the five. He's at the goal line. Touchdown, Kenny Pickett. Let's talk about Kenny Pickett. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to go. He's a tough guy, though. He gets that start on Saturday. We didn't know if we would see Joey Yellen, but it was nice to see Kenny back in the pocket. How did he perform? You mentioned he was the MVP of your game in your post-game press conference. Yeah, I mean, obviously, because he played. I mean, I think, if, you know, if, if Kenny Pickett is the starting quarterback in our game, you know, we got a better chance of winning, period, just because of all the reps he's taken throughout uh, his career here. Uh, and that's nothing against Joey or Davis Bevel. You know, it's a fact at this point in, in their careers and as young as they are. But, uh, you know, Kenny played, he played a good game. I mean, he threw the ball where he needed to. He made good decisions. And the big thing is we had zero turnovers again. And, and our offense, when Kenny's operating, that's a major, major factor. Pick it back. Fires it down the middle. The pass is caught by Addison inside the 30 at the 27. And here's Addison again in space. And Jordan Addison breaking free. Pick it rolls right. Throws it under pressure. The pass is caught inside the 15 with that great reception as freshman Jordan Addison. Let's talk about Jordan Addison. Another standout performance for him. A freshman doesn't feel like it anymore in this offense, but he got all 11 targets. He seems to be Kenny Pickett's go-to receiver. Have you ever had a freshman perform at this level? I don't think ever. I'm, you know, in all my years, I don't think we've ever had a freshman play like he's played. And, uh, can you imagine where he's going to be in year two or three? I think he's going to be, you know, a special player in the ACC, probably a, you know, rookie of the year honor this year. He's a special, special kid. What is it about him? Does he study a lot of film? Is he go back and practice on his own? Does he get some reps with Kenny? Is it extra work? What is it about his mentality? It's who he is athletically, number one. I mean, you know, you could do all the studying on the side, but if you can't run, can't change directions, run good routes, and and get open and find that empty grass, and then he catches the football. I mean, there, there's not very many times you have tallies where you know Jordan Addison dropped the football. So uh, Kenny trusts to throw the ball to him, knowing that hey, there's a 99% chance that uh, Jordan's going to catch that football. He had a you know, nice low one over the middle uh, that was a little underthrown, and he scooped that thing up. Uh, and then he's got ability to get yards after the catch uh, after after some of those. Nick Patty in the game, the quarterback, empty set. Gets the snap, he's gonna run the quarterback draw. He's into the end zone for the Panthers touchdown. Nick Patty on the quarterback draw. It's Nick Patty. Patty's gonna run to the end zone for the touchdown. 
a quarterback draw, the second one for Patty in this game, and the Panthers leapfrog into the lead. You also were able to execute in the red zone this time around. Two for two with Nick Patty, both runs, both touchdowns. I'm sure fans were surprised to see it. Did you adjust your play calling or was it just better execution? You know, a little bit of both, I think. I mean, I, I think anytime you're not very good, you blame the coaches and the players. And anytime, you know, you're having success, it's a little bit of both. I think it's, you know, obviously better play calling and, uh, and then better execution. You were able to establish the run. A lot of people said maybe you should give up on that, and you didn't. You guys did a good job at Florida State. Vincent Davis with a touchdown. We knew he would break through. Talk a little bit about the run game and how you were able to be successful. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we were able to run more than just one play. We got a couple different concepts, whether it be the draw, the inside zone, or outside zone. And our kids executed. You know, was it perfect all the time? No, but uh, you know, it never is going to be. Sheffield in the back to help with the block and intercepted, and that is Brandon Hill to the house. Let's talk about more of the young guys, a good performance for some of these players that stepped in. A.J. Woods, Brandon Hill, Eric Hallett, just to name a few, I don't want to leave anyone out, but they were able to step in and do a good job for those starters that were out. How did this young group grade out? They graded out really well. I mean, they've, they've had winning performances. I mean, you don't give up any big passes. Um, when you look at overall, you know, our goal every week is to give up four or less big plays. I mean, we gave up one, uh, we gave up two runs in one big pass, a 22 yarder, I believe. So when you got a young secondary, really missing three starters back there, and you do that, that shows you that we, you know, we're going to have, you know, a great future as well. Throws that pass, and it's intercepted at the 31 yard line by the Panthers, and a good leaping job by A.J. Woods. You mentioned the A.J. Woods interception kind of turned the momentum there. What did you see on that play? Yeah, he was in cover three, and I think, you know, he, he started off pressed on the receiver. I think he confused the quarterback by bailing out of there, and, and I think there was a miscommunication between the receiver who maybe should have broke off his route, but just a little confusion at the line of scrimmage. Pittsburgh fired through here, and Servassier Dennis, no surprise, was involved. Pocket collapses. He's hit, and he is going to be sacked. And the ball goes over on down. And he'll be sacked. Another sack by the Panthers. Coach, the front seven also did well, especially with the younger group behind them. What did you think of their performance? Yeah, they did a great job. And, and uh, you know, you hate to sit there and say it was unbelievable what they did. And you got to compare it to, you know, the week before we didn't get any pressure on Notre Dame and Ian Book. Um, but the 129 career starts compared to what you were playing against at Florida State, even though they're good football players, uh, was just a little bit different. So our kids executed and made plays. Not Ian Book, but they were able to pressure all three quarterbacks, two that you probably didn't study as much for. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, Purdy came in, and, um, and Blackman was the second guy to come in. Uh, Purdy finished up the game, and you know, we were able to get off after Travis early, and that was the important one. And you know, we knew he, he was the, the key to the entire game. Well, Coach, congratulations. We'll be back in a little bit to review Georgia Tech, another game on the road for you guys. We'll be back soon with more on Pitt Beyond the Script. Welcome back to Pitt Beyond the Script alongside Pat Bostic. I'm Rob King of AT&T Sportsnet. Pat, 41 to 17, the Panthers able to snap the four game losing streak. Yeah, it was big. You know, it was a nice win. Didn't always look like it was going to be 41-17 though. Down 14-3. I thought that was the most impressive part of the, of the win was, you know, just turning the tide in that game, the pick by A.J. Woods, and then coming back and taking advantage of some short fields and ultimately taking a lead into halftime and then building on that lead. Uh, obviously to, to a nice wide margin of victory. We'll talk about the defense coming up, but Kenny Pickett returns 21 of 27. Such a huge difference. No disrespect to anybody else, but this is a guy who's at the top of his game right now. Future NFL quarterback, it seems, and, and played like it. 
Well, you know, you play quarterback, it's about presence, right? I mean, he's a veteran. He's a guy that's been in the huddle with a lot of these guys for three, four years. So he knows, they know him, and he emanates confidence. And his presence alone uh, gives guys, it makes them relax, it makes them just try to do their job as opposed to trying to press. And I thought, yeah, obviously he wasn't 100%, but he still made some plays with his feet, got rid of the ball. The offensive line did a good job keeping him clean. And uh, boy, he's got some playmakers out there, namely Jordan Addison. He is a, he's just a superstar and uh, you know, another 11 catch performance. And I uh, thought he might've gotten robbed of that one touchdown, but hey, 127 yards ain't too shabby. 11 of their 21 receptions coming from Jordan Addison. Meanwhile, the running game showing some signs of life. They stuck with it. And I think when you get a lead, obviously, and you can put a team away, you want to be able to run the football. And they were able to do that. Obviously, Florida State, I think they were a little demoralized coming out of halftime. You know, without their quarterback, Jordan Travis, coming out of halftime, hey, you know, are we really going to have a chance to win this game? Their offense wasn't going. So the Panthers imposed their will. And that was good to see. Both Vincent Davis and A.J. Davis uh, were able to have some big, nice runs against the Florida State defense that isn't great but has enough talent to uh, certainly beat you. You mentioned briefly, but I think we should get back to maybe the turning point of the game in the first quarter, A.J. Woods with the interception. He looks right, throws that pass, and it's intercepted at the 31-yard line by the Panthers and a good leaping job by A.J. Woods. Yeah, I mean, they're playing without three starters in, in the back end. I mean, obviously, Paris Ford and Pinnock wasn't playing, and Marquez Williams didn't play. So you got A.J. Woods, and uh, obviously, Eric Hallett played opposite him. He had a chance at a pick early in the game, um, pretty much the same play, an errant back shoulder fade throw. And A.J. Woods came down 14-3 and made a huge play. I mean, I said you know, on the radio call before that someone's got to make a play or this thing could go out of the other direction. And uh, A.J. Woods made a play. And more importantly than even that, the, the, the offense capitalized with Nick Patty getting his first of two rushing touchdowns. Well, we talked about Paris Ford opting out. How about Brandon Hill? Beat early, then winds up with a forced fumble, an interception. He's in on seven tackles. What did you think of his performance? Well, you know, Jordan Travis is going to make a lot of guys look foolish. That move he put on Brandon Hill was, was a special move. And the thing about Brandon is it didn't waver. He's got confidence. He's a big hitter. And uh, he played his position really well. He filled the, the, the boundary run support extremely well after that point. Um, was Johnny on the spot on that interception, played his deep safety position well. I thought, um, you know, for a first game in his home state, um, and then to be named the Defensive Player of the Week in the ACC, that's, that's quite the uh, introduction to college football for Mr. Hill as a starter. We talked about Servasio Dennis. We've been talking about a man. Has he come on uh, two, two more sacks, seven tackles, but the defense in general, three interceptions, seven sacks, and now you're starting to get some guys, Habs, Baldonado, getting some guys healthy. And so it seems now coming out of that off week, some different ways that they're bringing that pressure as well. I mean, this is a top 10 defense. Uh, they have, they played it like every snap? Uh, probably not. They've had their lapses, but they didn't have too many lapses against Florida State. I thought after they got down 14-3, whatever adjustments were made, you started seeing Patrick Jones walking around a little bit, playing inside, started seeing them handle that, that boundary zone read a little bit better. Obviously, it helped not to have Jordan Travis in there. And I think the guy that you just mentioned that is turning into a superstar as well as a young guy is Servasier Dennis. I mean, you know, he, he's just explosive. He finds the ball and accelerates to the football. And that's a special talent. I mean, he, his instincts are one thing, but it's the ability, ability to act on those instincts immediately that make him a special linebacker. Last week, we talked about the four-game losing streak going into the off week and sort of trying to reset and make it a second half. The second game in that second half comes against Georgia Tech, a team that has been struggling uh, under Jeff Collins' his second year. They're going to a youth movement. They've really had a hard time protecting their freshman quarterback. They've allowed 15 sacks the last three games. Pitt, with that front seven, has got to be thinking it's time for another big game here against Georgia Tech. You know, Jeff Sims can do some stuff like Jordan Travis, though. He can make you miss. And, and if you are so committed to getting to the quarterback, one guy misses, quarterback can be out the gate. They are in a youth movement. I think how you treat the Florida State game is how you treat the Georgia Tech game. The same level of humility and focus. Regardless of who you're playing, you got to go in and play well. I think the first quarter against Florida State proved that. And Georgia Tech's coming off a bye. So they're coming off a bye week. They're fresh. They had a chance to recalibrate. Jeff Collins and Pat Narduzzi, in terms of how they coach their teams, they're both aggressive, tough, and physical. We talked a little bit about Georgia Tech's offense. Meanwhile, their defense giving up almost 40 points a game, Pat. This is an opportunity you would think for Pitt to begin to get on a little bit of a roll. You're not looking past this game, certainly, but you know tough games against Virginia Tech and Clemson away. You'd like to go in that cresting a wave and maybe an opportunity against this Georgia Tech defense. Yeah, well, you want that first quarter or that second quarter against Florida State to be the turning point of the second half of the year. And I thought they played great football the last three quarters. Uh, they're going to get a lot of man coverage against Georgia Tech. Jordan Addison should be able to have his way. 
A matter of protecting Kenny Pickett, Georgia Tech hasn't generated much of a pass rush, but they play a lot of man coverage. I expect them to pressure and see if Pitt can run the ball. It should be a day that the Panthers can both run it, through, run it on the ground and attack the uh, Yellow Jackets through the air. Saturday at 7 p.m. Look forward to your call, Pat. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks very much. Stick around. We're going to profile sophomore running back Vincent Davis when we resume on Pitt Beyond the Script. Pickett hands it off. Running left. Vincent Davis cuts for the goal line, and that's a Panther touchdown. I say I'm a slippery guy. I make a guy miss, a, a bouncy guy. In the give to Davis, spins into the end zone for the score. Big time run by Vincent Davis. A lot of the times when, when I'm getting hit, I don't see those guys. <laughs> like when I'm making a person miss, it's like a quick instant. Like I can feel them. It's a muscle memory thing. Once you practice the same thing every day and learning what, why you have to do it, when you have to do it, basically, your body puts it with it and you're able to put it on the field. We back on, baby, game day. Playing high school in football in Florida, it was fun. I went to Cardinal Gibbons. I went there all four years. I played junior varsity my first year, my junior year, and that's when I made a name for myself. Not being recruited by Florida schools, it definitely was a motivation. I, I still have that chip on my shoulder because, you know, I'm smaller. That's my man, my main man, Coach Partridge, Charlie Partridge. I met him through Marquez when he was coming to see Quez every week, you know, recruiting, he was doing the home visits and stuff. And I happened to come up here for my official. I didn't take no other official, and I committed that weekend. Basically, that's how I ended up making the decision to come to Pitt. Man, look at that guy, Dark Vincent Davis is in for the touchdown run. I learned a lot of football in this little bit of time, this corona time. Oh, it was a great time to learn, like breakdown plays. I could draw plays that I could never draw before. It's a reason for everything. Yes, now they're going to bring the nickel. All your issues are right here in terms of protection. With being a great pass if I can run it back. What I'm still learning right now, what Coach Powell gets on me every day, is my eye discipline. That plays a major role in pass blocking. What a great block out in front by Vincent Davis. A cut block, chop down a secondary defender to spring Jordan Addison on a nice first down jet sweep. I love a challenge. I'm going to take a challenge all the time. I'm not scared. I don't care how much bigger than me you are. I'm, I'm ready. We do have the best uniform in the country right now. I'm loving the colors. I'm loving all the new, the Panther head logo. I'm loving everything about it. What did you think of the, uh, the, the new alternating uniform? What did you think? Those things are tough. Those new uniforms are tough. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, you know how we coming all day. Yeah. Vincent Davis, he refuses to go down. Well, Vincent Davis continues to drive the Pittsburgh offense. And this is Vince Davis. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Wow. This offense has found some life in the run game. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, Veterans Day shirts. Uh, we're saying thank you to all the veterans that, that uh, let us do what we love to do and play baseball, uh, defending this, this great country of ours. Um, this day is important to me. My grandfather served in the military, so I'm thinking of him on this day, and, and it's just a, it's a great way to honor the veterans to serve our country. Last year, we, we had a nice group of veterans that are actually students here at Pitt uh, that we were able to kind of welcome them into our world, re enjoyed a game at PNC Park with the Pirates. But obviously with the pandemic, we have to do things different. And we still wanted to be able to reach out to them and let them know that we're thinking of them. And so our guys are gonna honor them by wearing t-shirts today. Our community service department, life skills, they are gonna be providing those uh, to let them know that we are thinking about them as we get closer to Veterans Day. 
Well, this day is important to me because my dad served in the Navy, and uh, I know how much it means to give that sacrifice to your country, so I'm grateful to everyone who serves. I, I think what it does, is it allows our guys to reflect, and it's a day, a day of reflection as we lead into Veterans Day tomorrow, whether it's family members or loved ones, or even friends that you know that have you know, spent time, sacrificed their time, their efforts for our freedom. It stinks this year that we can't be with you guys, but we do have some gift bags to give to you. And we appreciate all the work that you've done, and thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. Welcome back, Coach, back on the road to Georgia Tech again. You just went last year, you're going again, but this is a team you have won four out of five against. They're always close games, though. What do you see out of the Yellow Jackets so far? Well, I see a you know, much, much improved team from a year ago. Coach's first year there compared to where he is now. Uh, Jeff's done a you know, great job with that football team. Um, the thing I see is Jeff Collins is a tough guy and his, his personality shows in that team. I mean, they're, they're relentless the way they play. You, you're never going to see a Georgia Tech team quit. Uh, they play hard every game all the way down to the final, final minute of the game. They're coming off a of bye week, so they've had two weeks to study for you guys. They've had a tough schedule, but two bye weeks now because like COVID. That. I don't, like, I don't like it either. <laughs> they got two weeks to prepare for us. We get one week, you know. They'll have two weeks, so they'll have you know some new wrinkles that we haven't seen, so we'll have to be extra prepared mentally for some of the things, you know. You got to use your, your base knowledge, you know, what you know all year, what you've seen all year to, to figure it out. Offensively, this is a young, promising freshman quarterback, Jeff Sims. What have you seen on this Sims-led offense? You know, Jeff is a, is a, you know, number one, an athletic, tall, long athlete that can run with the football. He can hurt you with his feet. Uh, they'll have some design quarterback runs. But, you know, the most impressive thing is poise in the pocket his ability to, you know, to, to really scan the field and find open receivers. He does a good job now. He's always as accurate as a freshman. I think he's a really, really talented freshman quarterback in this conference. And you face another rotation of three running backs. You're used to this by now in the ACC. Talk about Jeff Collins' offense and those different looks you're going to get in the running game, you know, to help out that young freshman quarterback. Yeah, they, they've got a, you know, they're, they're, you know, spread offense as well, but they're going to run a lot of counter, inside zone, outside zone, really the same kind of plays you see weekly. We just don't know what formation, you know, we're going to see it out of. I mean, if you looked at what we prepared for last week, not to go back to Florida State, like we prepared for a bunch of stuff and we didn't see any of it. And, you know, it's probably going to be the same thing this week with Georgia Tech. I mean, we can prepare what we see on videotape, but, you know, the unknown is the unknown. Whether you have one week or two weeks, uh, Florida State did a lot of stuff we didn't plan on doing for whatever reason. I'd like to call up coach and say, hey, why? Why did you do this? Why didn't you try that? We practiced all week for this. It'd be nice if you you know, did something we practiced. Well, I'm sure Florida State said the same thing when they saw Nick Patty twice. Yeah. So, a couple yeah, times. No They're it. like, we did not see this on tape. So, I'm sure that was a surprise, as well as Kenny Pickett. But looking back at Georgia Tech, Jeff Collins' defense, Definitely a strong defense down there. They're actually ranked last in the ACC, but they're known for some turnovers and certainly are going to get after you. And they have a great linebacker in Kez Jackson. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, I didn't look at the stats. I didn't realize they were last in the ACC. You, know, you don't see that when you watch the videotape because they're just so tough and they play hard. That's what you're really looking at. Do they quit? What are they doing on tape? And you, you see them play hard. And they've had, you know, last three opponents, they played BC, they played Notre Dame, and they played, they played Clemson, Florida State, they played maybe. I mean, in Clemson. I think yeah. it was Clemson. So, combination of that will make you be last in the, in the conference as well. But they're, they're, they're a tough football team, and we'll find out next Saturday. It'll be a good matchup, though. This is a young group for Jeff Collins, and you also have some young players that are just getting used to the ACC style of play. So, good matchup. No doubt about it, Casey. All right, well, good luck on Saturday, a 7 o'clock game, so a little different. Enjoy that, and then you'll be back home for Virginia Tech. All right, waiting to come home. I know, we can't wait. All right, well, that's another edition of Pitt Beyond the Script. Thank you for joining us. Hail to Pitt. We're